All right, hey guys, it's Josh with Hard Head Veterans. Today we're gonna to talk about everyone's absolute favorite topic when it comes to ballistic helmets, and that's ballistic transient deformation, which most of you are gonna recognize as back face deformation. Back face deformation is the deformation of a shell after an impact. Typically, it only occurs during a high energy ballistic strike from shrapnel or from a speeding bullet. Now, it's easy to assume, and common sense would agree, that keeping any kind of deformation to an absolute minimum is ideal. However, measuring back face deformation is where all of this gets really complicated. All right, the most common test methodology doesn't measure the amount of actual back face deformation in the helmet shell itself, but it measures how much the clay form head the helmet is tested on deforms after impact. Now, you don't have to be a scientist to see the flaws in this test, right? Our skulls aren't made of clay. Go ahead and push your finger into your skull and you'll see that it's not Play-Doh, it's not clay. Because of this, a review from the Department of Defense Protocols for Combat Helmets stated in reference to back face deformation that back face deformation data cannot be used to determine the level of protection provided by a new helmet. This is also why a newer procurement contract may not even have a back face deformation standard included with it. And it's also why the new ASTM ballistic standard for police helmets has made back face deformation testing completely optional. So what's the safe back face deformation number? That's part of the problem, no one knows. Older contracts set the limit at 24 millimeters using the test that we talked about earlier in the video. There have even been tests done on cadavers but with arguable results due to the elderly age of the tested skulls and the normal data scatter you get with ballistic testing in general. The best data that we have is from actual combat saves, it's in this chart. It basically tells us that if the helmet can stop the bullet, the user is probably going to be able to return to duty. So all of that being said, you, you might have noticed we're a little hard headed around here. And as end users ourselves, we would rather work towards keeping back face deformation numbers as low as possible. So instead of scrapping the testing like some other people out there are gonna be doing, we're gonna to continue to work towards reducing back face deformation while finding a balance with weight, size, and fitment. Instead of not doing back face deformation testing at all because it's now optional, we're actually gonna start doing more. And I'll touch on this in a second. A key element that's missed in all of your backyard tests that you've seen floating around on YouTube and other places is not only the fact that they're not using a head form, but it's the fact that they've removed the padding from the helmets, not allowing those pads to do their job. Padding plays a pivotal role in any type of helmet protection, but especially in high energy impacts like bullets. This is where advances like our micro lattice pads can make a huge difference because they work to distribute that energy throughout the entire helmet instead of in one place. Shooting a helmet without suspension, padding, and a head form is a lot like doing an automobile crash test without seats, seat belts, airbags, and you're using a child in the front seat. You're not gonna get the right results. Another thing to remember is that just because a helmet deforms on the exterior of the shell doesn't always mean there's gonna be poor back face deformation performance on the inside. The more area that can transfer energy by deforming means less your skull, or in this case a clay form head, is gonna be impacted by the energy from that deformation. In this clip, you can clearly see the crown deforming significantly. And yet when we take the measurements, we only end up with four millimeters of back face deformation in the clay form. Yeah, four. This is also why we typically see better performance from full cut style helmets and shots on the crown and rear of the helmet. More material equals more shell to help dissipate that energy. Going back to the additional back face deformation testing that we're gonna be doing, we believe it makes sense to test against the most common threats. Currently, the only back face deformation standard that exists for helmets stem from the PAST and ACH contracts. They only test against nine millimeter at 1400 feet per second, which is a good start with lots of data already out there, but we can do better. Now, according to the FBI data, almost 80% of officer deaths are caused by nine millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson, and 45 ACP. Therefore, we as a company have already started testing our helmets against these threats. And we're gonna publish that back face deformation data just like we already do with our nine millimeter tests. Now, I know what you're thinking. NIJ3A typically refers to a maximum resistance to penetration at 44 Magnum. So why don't we test back face deformation to this? Well, first and foremost, there's only a select few dirty hairies out there rocking a 44 Magnum. 
this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Also, using that FBI data, we can see clearly that this cannon has only accounted for 3 and 530 woundings and 1 and 343 murders over the last 10 years. However, if you do encounter one, we highly suggest you utilize the five Ds of dodgeball, regardless of the helmet or number of helmets that you're wearing. It's a good indicator of maximum penetration protection, uh, but that's really about it when it comes to a helmet. One of the comforting things that comes out of testing these in certified NIJ labs is that we're testing in a worst case scenario every single time, such as a zero angle impact or a full velocity impact. Helmets naturally deflect due to their inherent curvatures. That's why we have combat saves on handgun only rated helmets against rifle threats. Not to mention, different angles and velocities that occur in combat can also make helmets do some pretty wonky things as well, especially when we're talking about rounds traveling over long ranges. But can we make a helmet that eliminates back face deformation entirely? Sure, of course we can, but you're probably not going to want to wear it. With each threat increase, you can really start to stack on the pounds. The more material you have is the more area you have for the energy to absorb into. Any type of armor is a balancing game between weight and protection. Remember, it's up to you to ensure you read the fine print from the manufacturer about their helmet's performance and even ask for test results. And when you're looking at those test results, make sure you're seeing a helmet, not a soft armor panel. This should come from a third party as well, and it should never come from their in-house tests. You can find all of our helmet's test results published on the product page under the NIJ tab. Our tests come from National Technical Systems, who are an accredited third-party NIJ laboratory. That's really all we've got for this video today on back face deformation. I hope you were able to learn something, and uh, stay informed. Hardhead Veterans out.